Hey, it's Mr. Malte. We're going to look at how to make a successful digital mosaic. There are some key components to this. Uh, one would be the type of image that you choose, uh, using a color picker, knowing how to zoom, getting good with that polyline tool and the shapes that you actually use, um, the rivers or flow of actually where you put the shapes, and then drop shadow and background and how that affects what you're going to have their end product look like. So we'll look at those things one at a time. And I uh, won't do a full walkthrough. I've already done this and it was fairly time consuming, but I'll show you how to get this going to make a really cool looking digital mosaic. So first of all, we're just going to do an image search. Just go to a new tab and search for the animal that you want. If you're doing something like a wolf, it's really important that you add profile. You don't want something three-dimensional, something like this, where the wolf is in profile with the nose to the side. Super important to use. If it's an orca or anything else like that, then yeah, doing something that's to the side, much, much easier than something that's facing you. So something profile, number one. I'm just going to copy this image and I'm going to go back to my slide. And I'm just going to control V, paste it in. All right. Now we are just going to be zooming and using the polyline just to make shapes. Remember zooming is control alt plus and minus and once we're there we're using polyline it's under the line tool and it's here now if you're going to be using a shape if you use a triangle triangles kind of send you out in directions whereas quadrilaterals things with four sides are a little more stable so we are just going to be clicking and creating our, our solid shapes now you can leave the border for now, but we're not going to want borders. We're going to make transparent borders in the end. All right. So that's just, and we're going to be filling these in. The tighter you put the shapes, uh, the more the image is easy to see, but you can uh, decide how much space that you want between them. Now we don't want these ugly gray shapes. We're going to be using a color picker. Uh, one that I use is Color Pick Eyedropper. So you don't want to go to just do a Google search Color Pick Eyedropper. You can even add Excellent Chrome extension Color Pick Eyedropper and grab it from the Chrome Web Store. Just install that, and it should appear up here. You might have to pin it right there, and it's as easy as clicking on it once you get it, and then clicking Control C. Oops. Click on the shape, click on the paint can, custom, control V. There we go. And if it's something close by, you can always use the paint format tool to paint other shapes. So grabbing an image, that was a lot of stuff. Putting that image onto a slide, making sure it's a profile image, using zoom, control all minus, control all plus. We are drawing with that polyline tool, and I've got other lessons on the site hopefully you've already done to get you used to using that polyline tool. And you can decide how large you want them. Don't zoom in super far and do a bazillion shapes. You want to just, you know, you can fill these areas in, but you don't want it to be a crazy number of shapes. They're not tiny little pieces. Um, yeah, so that's the polyline and zooming in. Now, when you are doing this, this is actually super important, that you, we kind of have a tendency to make these lines and before I fixed it I had them too so actually here's one right here there's this kind of river but it flows along with the actual shape so it's okay see I've kept these in because it kind of flows and shows the flowiness um, but sometimes we get these rivers and we might not want them so this I could actually fix it's got this channel they don't necessarily want so you might want to break up some of these shapes and block those rivers so that like here boop, there's a shape there that blocks that so then it doesn't have a, a cut all the way through your image. Um, another thing, once you've gone through and you've added all your shapes, you've got all these different things using Color Picker, you'll notice that it's hard to see, obviously, the white background. But the darker the background, the more cohesive, more it puts the shape together. So a darker background will be better. You don't want something that's light because it's less cohesive, right? It seems more broken up as opposed to a darker background. It shoots it together. Uh, the other thing I've added, and I'm going to do this to all the shapes afterwards, is if you drag and select all the shapes, I've gone to format options, 
and I've added a drop shadow. So the drop shadow just gives, a, and it's not you know too far away. The distance isn't too far. You don't want it. <laughs> see, that's going to be bad. Just a little bit of distance and a little bit, a little bit of blur. It just kind of pops it off the page just a tiny bit. If I change that to back to white, you'll see what that looks like. So let's see how that just kind of pops those shapes off the page. It gives a little bit of a shadow there. So drop shadow is something that I've added afterwards to all those shapes. So good luck. It is truly just zooming in, but not too far, and using the polyline tool to fill in some of these little areas, keeping in mind that you don't want these big channels flowing all the way through. When you have color you like, paint format tool, you can paint. Escape gets rid of that. Escape also gets rid of if you're stuck in the polyline, you don't know how to get rid of that. Escape does that too. So good luck with your mosaics. Any other tips I'm missing? Let's see. Block the rivers, break things up, and don't have don't have giant shapes. Yeah, dark background. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's pretty good. So it doesn't tell you how to do everything, just polyline zooming in. Good luck with the color picker. And uh, let me know how it goes creating mosaics by using that polyline tool just to create. All right, have fun.